and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube watching this one later on for some Gruul Kiora as our last deck today in our 12 hour stream. We've had a really fun stream today, a lot of sweet decks. The budget decks went really well, better, even better than expected. Um, the Rakdos discard we just played was awesome. Is it Storm combo was very good too. Should have had a better record if I played better, but um, good. Uh, a good stream day today. Our last deck here, we got like an hour left. So we're going to be playing like three matches over in ranked uh, with Gruul Kiora where we're trying to smash. So this is this is kind of mixing um, Gruul haste smash stuff with card advantage, kind of putting those together. We have um, Questing Beast, Shifting Ceratops, Gruul Spellbreaker, Skargon Hellkite. You know, these things hit hard. They can all have haste. Um, we also, of course, have Bone Crusher Giant and some good removal in a card that hits hard. A Voracious Hydra being removal and a big creature. Um, so, you know, like we're trying to smash with all this stuff. But then to pair, so the kind of the problem with those Gruul decks is that if you don't curve out, you know, other decks outlast you. So what we're trying to do is we, we have Kiora Behemoth Beckoner that allows us to draw extra cards every time any of these creatures with power four or greater enters we get to draw cards we have the great henge up at the top end also that if we play this then we get to draw cards for all our creatures entering so hopefully we can still play a longer game even against like removal spells and find more of our haste creatures to attack our opponent so you know it's like building a, a kiora deck this is what we got didn't really upgrade it to like update it too much with Theros. Theros didn't really have like good four power haste creatures really to uh, add to the deck. Um, we have Temple of Abandons though that we get to play instead of you know, like before I had like that other uh, Rugged Highlands, the Gain Life Land. So we get to upgrade that. And then we get like some Phoenix of Ash in the sideboard. I really like Phoenix, as Phoenix of Ash as another haste threat. We got a couple of those in the sideboard. Um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of all I got. Um, so yeah, here we go. Let's let's go and play some Gruul Kiora. So we're gonna play traditional, standard, ranked, and like I said, we'll play like three matches. I know it's a little bit of a shorter video. We're kind of. Ending up, ending the 12 hour stream. Don't want to go super late. Playing a lot of games. Um, of course, those of y'all in chat, if you want to see how we did with any of the other decks, if you want to see any of the records, you can type exclamation point to score for that. Um, with this video, with this being the last video of the day, I will, in the YouTube description, I'll put like a spoiler with all of the records uh, down there because I've had some people ask that that they would like to st like a lot of people on the YouTube channel so they don't want the records up here but um, we'll still have uh, but then other people have wanted still want to see like the records in like one place so that's what we'll that's where we will do it so the last deck of the night, every night, we'll have just all the records. Because basically I'll just copy-paste what we have for the exclamation point score. Copy-paste that over into the YouTube description. All right, so Annex will make two creatures. I guess they get two creatures either way. I guess I could have stomped the Steamkin first, and then they only get one creature from Annex, but then they also get a creature from Steamkin. So it's just kind of either way they get two creatures. It's just over. 
Used all my removal. Now Torbrand gets me. So definitely playing the flame sweeps in the other ambush. Taking out a great henge. It's just a little slow. Maybe I should be taking out both great henges, honestly. But do like how great henge can sit back and gain two life for a while. But honestly, maybe we should be taking them out. It's kind of like key or a great henge. Like our, our card advantage stuff is just not what you need against mono red. So those are like the cards to take out. Um, how would a Chandra do? Probably not that great. I guess I'm going to play like two Return to Natures also because of Ember Cleave. And then if we just take out Beckoner and the Great Henge. Let's just try that. I guess I put back Vivian. I mean, I could just put back the Return to Nature. That's kind of the obvious thing to put back, but yeah, I guess we do. Just hope they don't have Ember Cleave, I guess. I prefer a Scorching Dragonfire to Lava Coil. Yeah, because there's... Um, I like the ability to hit the Planeswalkers with Scorching Dragonfire, and, and a lot of the decks that are playing those like want, want the Instant Speed card also. I like the instant speed being able to hit planeswalkers. There's not, there are a couple four toughness creatures, but there's not an abundance of four toughness creatures. Uh. I guess it's pretty risky going Hydra for one and they just shock it. Clothis doesn't affect the battlefield. don't have a good option. Yeah. I've determined that if they do have Ember Cleave, I was just dying anyway. Need that return to nature that I sideboarded in. I think I sideboarded well. I think we just... Did not draw well that second game. The first game, of course, Torbrand really got me. I think I sideboarded well. And I guess I could have saved removal. I could have I could have played the first game a little differently. Played around Torbrand better. All right, so Mono Red again. So like Kiora, Great Henge, the two cards that we'll be boarding out. But they only played one land, which is not very many lands as far as lands are concerned.
You're looking very good this game. My opponent thought so too. So we're gonna take out Kiora, Great Henge, and replace them with Flame Sweep, Return to Nature, and another Ambush. Okay. Ugh. Yeah, I like our cyborg plan. But we need lands to curve out. There's 25 lands in the deck, so as far as Gruul decks go, that's that's on the higher end. But presumably that would help us curve out um, more consistently. Well, that's kind of a bummer. I wanted to play Paradise Druid this turn. I'm still going to do it. I'll play Paradise Druid still. Just makes the rest of my turns a lot better. Hmm. Like they're doing that pre-combat so that they're, they're not going to be able to cast whatever spell they get. Yep, they could have just attack with the robber of the rich first, and they would have seen they would have got my bone crusher giant. Get that out of there. Thank you. Oh, I got punished for. Attacking first. Or not attack. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, for best of one, I would probably play... Like, I'd probably take out one of the great hedge i'd probably take out a great henge for another like I, I would like i think you want to sideboard some against mono red and best of one i think you wanted a little pre-sideboarded so i'd probably take out one of the cures or great henge and so you're know, like great henge is like a mythic so you can take that out for another domri's ambush um maybe just that i mean you could you could play a couple flame sweeps also but you know, you do play against a lot of non-mono red also. This orange name, if you haven't seen like this this kind of orange name before, that means that that means that they are a wizard's employee. This is a, a wizard's employee here. I don't have... Um, oh, they're playing with Wilderness Reclamation, my least favorite card. They're promoting good, fun magic. I was gonna say I don't have the the third land to play 
untapped to play these things, unfortunately. I actually would rather play against Mono Red. I, I don't mind playing against Mono Red at all. I don't like cards that give you just such a sheer mana advantage. I just don't think it's a, a good design. I, I don't like Wilderness Reclamation. That, you know, like that Fires of Invention. Like, you know, playing Gadwick for two and then untapping and now you have five lands to still do stuff. I don't like it. That's me. No, other people don't like model red or don't like control or things like that. So yeah, I thought if I just play Questing Beast, the, the Gadwick would tap it down. Need to get Gadwick out of here. So I'm glad there's no counterspell. Could still be a Brazen Borrower to bounce. Cool. Got Gadwick out of there. Yeah, I, I like Cauldron Familiar Witches Oven. It's just... They could have done a better job with designing it to let it just auto sack food so it wouldn't take as long. But like those are all like kind of cards that that do things that you know all well, like I'm I'm fine with, but doubling your mana every turn, like that's not that's not an acceptable thing for a four mana card to double your mana every turn. I don't think that that's that that's fine. Where your constraint is that you have to play instants, where instants are the most powerful thing to be playing anyway. It's not much of a deck building constraint. Um, let's see. So I'm not really double spelling. I think I'm gonna go Questing Beast. Because Questing Beast is legendary, we got another one if there is a counter spell. See, last turn they played like Omen of the Sea and Uro to ramp and then untap and then Thassa's Intervention for four. It's just so much mana.
all they need to do is just find a, a expansion explosion and I die. Still just drawing five and then still having infinite mana. All right, so we're gonna want more haste. I think do I want Kiora. Yeah, I think I want Kiora. Great hench against against brazen borrower is just really rough. My best hope is that this wizard's employee is testing this deck to see if they want to get rid of wilderness reclamation. Because I, I mean, that's just. I'm not saying that it it should get banned from it's too powerful but just ever since it's been printed I've always just really disliked the card and wished it was gone so I would not mind that's just a personal thing that's that's what I'm hoping Somebody, <laughs> yeah, so I'm saying that what's worse to fair, you know, three mana to fair your wilderness reclamation? Well, wilderness reclamation like, uh, sorry, what I'm trying to say, oh, uh, Teferi would not have been a card if it wasn't for wilderness reclamation. Like, wilderness reclamation and Ravnica Allegiance is what led to Teferi being printed and worded the way that it is. They would have just, because they wanted they you know printed Teferi to try to stop Wilderness Reclamation Nexus. They would have just banned Wilderness Reclamation, which was an uncommon at the time. They wouldn't have had to print Teferi as ridiculous as it is. As it is. So for those of y'all that don't like Teferi, you can blame Wilderness Reclamation for it. Hydra being a 4-5 is nice. Doesn't die to the Red Sweeper. I think the only set in current standard that I generally like at the moment is Theros. The other is too high. I I really liked Guilds of Ravnica also. I like Theros too, but I really liked Guilds of Ravnica as well. Both of those were really good. M20... At the time, I wasn't a huge fan of M20, but kind of comparative to some of the other stuff, it it was a pretty decent set too. No, Eldrain, uh, Eldrain was not a good set. That was, I mean, Oko was just like there was no reason to print Oko. That was just ridiculous.
just yeah, Oko was just absurd. Um I can understand the what's the other once upon a time. I could I could understand how that that one, you know, missed and everything. I think that's but printing Oko was absurd and then I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of the adventure stuff. Honestly, I kind of like the adventure cards. Like the adventure cards are like they're kind of cool and flavorful. Um but what I really don't like is I don't like Edgewall Innkeeper and Lucky Clover. Because all the adventure cards are already two for ones, and I just don't think they needed like Edgewall Innkeeper or Lucky Clover uh, to, again, further reward you for playing two for ones and make them all like three for ones and four for ones and stuff like that. Like the adventure cards are already good enough. I just didn't need those. So yeah, I didn't really like. Uh, Throne of Eldraine, basically because of Oko and Innkeeper Clover. <laughs> yeah, Questing Beast is kind of unnecessary too. And then, uh, I don't, I don't really dislike Ember Cleave, but I can understand people disliking it. think it's acceptable. <clears throat> it's difficult to make playable equipment, you know, like if you want to like make a, a playable equipment that's honestly a pretty difficult thing to do without it being like, you know, super, super powerful and like really overpowered. There's not a lot of room uh, to make, you know, for a playment to be, for an equipment to be playable or just way too good where you're like skull clamp level. Like it, there's not a lot of, of room. Titan's not big enough. Um, but yeah, I like Theros. The the one thing, the one my one complaint about Theros is that they just made too many good cards for blue white control, or just like blue control. Really up the power level of blue eye control but and not really proportionally to other stuff but it's not that's not a as big of, of a complaint as like the those other sets it's a good good play So I'm shuffling with Fable Passage. So these are both going to get shuffled. This is a good play. Can't really make Phoenix have four power. That's the reason, of course, why I played the Fable Passage and cracked it, was so that I was going to be able to get the Phoenix back.
could have not played Kiora, and then the Phoenix could have, you know, could have been able to pump the Phoenix be able to attack for lethal, but obviously they were just going to be brazen borrowing and blocking the Phoenix. Like that was obviously what was going to be happening, and so. Got the Kiora in. Of course, I could have un untapped a land also to be able to pump it, but. It's not a point whenever they're certainly blocking with borrower. I don't really think Dream Trawler was a mistake. I think that's that's perfectly fine. I like I like the four mana wrath a lot less. I don't like that four mana wrath. <clears throat> All right, looks like looks like they got this. Yeah, we really didn't need even more four mana board wipes, but here we are. Poor Kiora. Didn't get it done for me. All right, so we went one and two with Gruul Kiora. Kiora did not look too good in those games, unfortunately. Um, it's still flooded out. I could have, you know, played Kiora before the Voracious Hydras. Like that turn I played the 10-11 Voracious Hydra, I could have just played Kiora and then um, you know, take it a little slower and then maybe draw in a couple extra cards. Maybe that could have made a difference. Yeah, like maybe that could have made a difference. But, oh well. All right, so that's uh, that's Gruul Kiora. Very fun 12-hour stream tonight. Um, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow, normal time, for a regular stream. Uh, those of y'all watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Uh, you know, thanks for watching all the videos. I know there's tons of videos today. Um, you know, leave those comments and everything like that. And all, all the decks, let me know how, how you like them. And, of course, hit those like buttons. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a uh, gruel Kiora here. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you for the next video.